Where's my phone? Oh, there it is. Hello, everybody! It is Friday! Who is with us tonight? Hey, Jennifer, Dana, Bailey, Anita. Great to have you all with us. In early tonight on this Friday. We're more eight than ish tonight. Great to have... Hey, Kelly. Dennis is with us. Hope you and uh, Joni are well, Bailey. Good to have you. I haven't heard from Joni recently. I'm feeling Joni deprived. Anytime, anytime. Good to have you with us tonight. Hey, Twiggy. Kitty's with us. Good to have you all with us tonight on this Friday night. We did it. Another work week. Another week. I mean, yeah, Saturday's a bonus day, but we're getting it. We're doing it. People, it's Friday. Ah! So you, the slave driver, are not letting her watch my show at work? You're not letting poor Joni, making the poor, poor woman work? Ugh! Oh. Hey, Rick, how are you? Good to have everybody here tonight. What are we grateful for this Friday evening? What is it that is making your world grateful this Friday evening? Tell me about it. Tell me, people. Dina's with us. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's all good, Bailey. It's all good. It is, it is. So tell me what we're grateful for tonight. It is, I have to share with you, it is National Martini Day. National Martini Day tonight. And we have a vodka martini tonight because we are out of gin. We are out of gin tonight in the household, so we need to make a gin run. Got a lot accomplished on your day off. That's good, especially if they were non-work things, Kitty. I hope they were non-work things. Good evening, Dina. What are we grateful for? Nancy's pool. Well, Nancy, you have to go to work tomorrow, so, uh, you know, if somebody used your pool while, it's at, while you were at work, I know nothing about it tomorrow. I'm just saying. Hey, great sales in Texas. What, Dennis didn't sell that seat out from underneath you, Jana? Sell it all. Hey, Adele and Dazzle. Hey, Nash, uh, North Asheville Angie. I'm screwing that up. I wanted to call you Nashville Angie. Asheville Angie. We could use a Nashville Angie, too. What the heck? Grateful for good sales this week and that the demonstrations didn't get out of control in Fargo today. That is a good thing. Dina's got an amazing staff and customers. Those are all good things. It is really great to hear how much uh, we've been missed and how much... Uh... Yeah, I'm, Edwin, I'm really interested to see what the rules are you know, with the dressing rooms by appointment, you know. So we're supposed to get rules from the governor this weekend on it. Um, I'm curious to see whether it's going to be anything we can legitimately use. Um, you know, I, uh, I want to post, so we have areas of our store that people are using as a dressing room. Uh, behind the pluses rack, behind the maternity racks are, are two areas that, are, that people are using. Behind the maternity racks, Edwin, is a glass window out into the parking lot. Behind the other rack is, a, is dead center uh, of a camera. So I want to say, I want to put up a sign, I want to put a bucket out in front of the one that's in front of the glass window that charges people for the show, okay, that are standing outside watching. And uh, behind the maternity rack, I want to hang up a sign, I think we decided tonight, that says, 
watch this security camera on YouTube. You know, and here's the address. Cuties Cuties or something on YouTube or something. I, I don't know, but... Uh... Nice, Jana. <sighs> yeah, well, I think the governor in his wisdom, Nancy, is going to have some silly rules for it. So I'm waiting to see. And... and you know, I had one customer today say, you know, you should do whatever, and the hair salon up the street is, you know, that has a small clothing area, has been doing, letting people try on, uh, and um, you should just do it until you get caught. And I'm like, you don't do the right thing because nobody's looking, and you do the right thing because it's the right thing. So, whether you agree with it or not. So, I... Uh, I, I am very curious to hear what the uh, what the governor says. Uh, I, you know the actual rules for appointments are so. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But we've actually done well. I mean, Nan Nancy, one of the things we did do is allow seven-day returns with tags attached and the receipt. Uh, um, and so that's been working out well. And they typically have been exchanging and getting more. So we'll see, we'll see how that uh, goes. Yeah, it, it's been working out. So we'll see. But... You know, it's it's not been a big deal. I think it's cost us some women's clothing sales, uh, but uh, you know, it, we'll we'll see what happens. And I'll I'll be very curious to read the language um, in this. And you know, the governor's just making stuff up in Massachusetts. Now we're having phase two, step two, step two of phase two. So, but. Oh, really? In Texas, Jana, they're going to make people wear masks? My sister's having a hard enough time with it in the school system, and that's forced by the teachers' union, not by the district. Um, wow, I'm surprised that your county is, is, uh, is forcing that, um, especially because, you know, quite honestly, becoming the police of that uh, is hard. Yes, and I'm encouraged by the, the overall numbers too, Edwin. Um, and I certainly had some people in store today without masks. Uh, which was, uh, uh, you know, kind of interesting. So we'll see, we'll see where that all goes. Uh, I'm not sure. I, uh, I believe in the masks for safety. I'm not a fan of mask wearing, but I... Uh, yeah, I'm really surprised at that in Texas, Jana. I mean, uh, that that just shocks me. And Tampa's doing it too. I I'm I I mean I'm with the need for it medically, but I'm just surprised about it. Yeah. Well, let's get things going tonight. We got the Good Morning Good Night book here. I got my glasses somewhere. I finally found them last night under the table. I don't know where I knocked them off, but uh, let's see what we got tonight. Well, this is a good Friday night thing. Good morning. I know it seems like everyone left without you for the party, and those stepsisters suck. But us woodland creatures are on your side. Hey, Bonnie, good to have you in park with us tonight. Here, just as I read the Good Morning, Good Night book for the evening. Good to have you with us. I'm more eight than ish tonight. More eight than ish. And Park, it is National Martini Day tonight. So I uh, hope you are taking part. Ah. Let's get going with what we got going on today. 
We'll start with a note to inspire. Before we can build the world we want to live in, we have to imagine it. Greatness starts with a clear vision of the future. Well, this is a good sign. McDonald's, the Golden Arches, is going to hire 260,000 staff this summer as restaurants reopen. McDonald's said on Thursday it'd hire about 260,000 restaurant staff in the United States this summer as stores reopen for diners after serving them through delivery, drive through and takeaway for months on end due to the pandemic. Uh, earlier this week, the burger chain said its U.S. sales fell in April and May due to the health crisis but signaled a recovery in demand as it restarts dine-in. Yeah, those hot date nights that... Uh, Hey, uh, that, that Park takes Bonnie on to McDonald's. Uh, those are coming back, Park, I'm just saying. Several U.S. states have listed restrictions, and um, they are bringing them back. Hey, I'm all with that two scotch old fashions, but I, you know, I did not park. I did not want to let a holiday, Martini Day, go to waste. National Martini Day, and all I had was vodka. Uh, tonight, no, no, uh, no gin tonight. So it's a vodka martini. Costco, Target, and other stores are relaxing safety policies. Costco is bringing back free food samples, i.e., date night. Target is accepting customer returns on all merchandise, and Kroger is returning to its pre-pandemic store hours at many locations. Uh, stores that were deemed essential and kept the doors open throughout the virus pandemic are now taking steps to return to normal. These changes may be welcomed by customers who miss the convenience of daily life pre-pandemic. But some worker safety experts, epidemiologists, and labor groups warn that these companies are prematurely relaxing the safety measures they enacted in March and April to prevent the virus from spreading. The easing of policies is playing out as more states and cities Loosen stay-at-home orders, and as retailers, malls, and restaurants reopen. Last week, New York City allowed retail stores to set up curbside for the first time, and California permitted schools, gyms, movie theaters, and bars to reopen with modification. Some states, like Georgia, reopened nail salon, massage therapists, and bowling alleys as early as late April. So, we'll see where that goes, but a little bit of normalcy is coming to them. I, I miss the samples too, Twiggy. It's part of my normal. But I got to say, my last trip to Costco was fairly normal. I thought I was just going to run in and, and get the couple necessities like spinach dip. And uh, it became a very expensive trip because they had gotten rid of the one-way aisles. And the only real restriction besides people wearing masks and the fact that samples weren't back was they, were, they had somebody queuing and telling you what aisle to go check out at. So we'll uh, we'll see how that goes, but I, you know, I I've been avoiding stores like Costco, the grocery store, etc., because I'd be frustrated by it. Um, Nordstrom is preparing to retake Manhattan. No, Nordstrom will open all of its retail locations in New York City on Wednesday, making the retailer the first of the city's department stores to set a firm reopening date in Manhattan. Nordstrom operates a flagship women's store, a men's store, two off-price Nordstrom rack locations, and two Nordstrom local service hubs in the city. Hey, Yvonne, great to have you joining us tonight. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. Cole says it tie up with Amazon underscores the importance of having stores. Cole says its Amazon partnership is teaching the retailer a lot about its own stores, especially amid the pandemic. It has opened our eyes that there are other roles a coal store can play to the American consumer. Said at a, uh, they said at a CNBC work spotlight event. <coughs> Cole said it, the, its Amazon partnership is teaching the retailer about a lot about its own stores. It's opened our eyes. Uh, Cole said ahead of the 2019 holiday season that a nationwide rollout of its Amazon return service 
was going to be a boon for business. It now accepts Amazon returns at all of its stores, devoting a portion of each of its shops to the service with designated kiosks or counter. The hope for Kohl's has always been that in coming in to make returns, customers will then proceed to buy something, subsequently boosting Kohl's sales. Analysts have doubted that tie-up has been worth, wa- worth it for Kohl's, um, especially when this past holiday season was not as strong. I get this question. Is Amazon working? Kohl's CEO Michelle Gass said in a uh, NRF uh, big show. Amazon is working, she said, debunking the naysayers. The return program is working. We're seeing the traffic. We're getting new customers. It has brought new people into Kohl's who otherwise wouldn't have gone into a Kohl's. And many of them buy something. It has underscored how important a physical transaction is to some people. Meanwhile, as coal stores are able to reopen after being forced to shut, said customers are coming back even stronger than the retailer was anticipating. We are thankful customers have returned in strength to our stores. It's not quite before COVID levels, but it's quite interesting. People have come back strong, especially to apparel. Um... And other retailers what we've covered, American Eagle, Abercrombie & Fitch, are saying the same thing, that customers are returning to stores in larger droves than expected. Coal stock has fallen a little more than 54% this year. Airport retailer Hudson News has reopened more than 100 locations by June 15th, and is accelerating plans to reopen the rest of more than 700 stores that shuttered during the pandemic as passenger traffic fell. Uh, The company operates a little more than a thousand stores in um, transportation hubs in the U.S. and Canada. That is a good sign. That is a good sign for the return for the economy if it is worthwhile to open those stores because they carry a lot of topical things, newspaper, magazines that are current, that are still kept current, so that there's some travel going on, that is actually very good news indeed. With uh, what does business look like post-pandemic economy look like? Consumer confidence was waning with 78% of Americans living paycheck to paycheck before the crisis began. Confidence was already pretty low. Unfortunately, fundamental problems facing the labor force have gotten worse. The pandemic has caused over 30 million Americans to file for unemployment in March and April. 2019 survey by Capital percent of um, small businesses feel unprepared for a recession. Businesses must diversify revenue streams, reduce risk, get financing, and retain existing customers, many of whom will have different expectations in a new normal world. Legendary football coach Lou Holtz says, show people you care because that's where people give their best effort. We have overwhelmed citizens. Um, 30% of apartment tenants did not pay rent in April, and among homeowners, 23% made partial payments or did not pay their mortgage. You may want to consider offering discounts as well as let customers join a rewards program that lets them save on repeat purchases. That's good for cash flow anyway. Your margins may get squeezed, but so are everyone else's. If you focus on the client and their goals, then the money will follow. There's no better marketing than a completely satisfied customer. A managing attorney at Accident Lawyers uh, firm in Newport Beach, California. If a customer feels like you're treating them like a paycheck, then they won't recommend you to anyone. At my firm, we make it clear that the client's health and well-being are most important. I don't know that I would have quoted an accident lawyer for them. Uh, For establishments that have a digital footprint, conversions are crucial for growing revenue. Without conversions, a business owner would be wasting precious marketing dollars. Local businesses need to optimize advertisements on social platforms like Facebook and Instagram to boost traffic and conversions. You should be adapting to the new normal, which I think this industry has done a phenomenal job for. Um, Business owners should diversify revenue streams and de-risk their organization. You know, for example, if you're all clothing, maybe you add in small furniture items um, that people can carry in. 
if you're all furniture, maybe you work in some purses or some jewelry to add that would be a way to diversify. Okay, because clients realize the value of money, which is going to help resale. And being flexible is a strategic advantage. Marianne, how are you? I hope all is well with you. I can't believe little Missy turns 90 next week. I can't wait to see the, uh, the rolling party for little Missy. Will they be covering that on the Chicago News? I just, people want to know. Do, 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 do. That goes in the next file. Brookfield takes gap to court over unpaid rent. Brookfield Property Partners took gap to court in Texas over $2 million in unpaid rent over three months, and for what the mall developer says is a refusal to open stores at its properties in Texas. A Brookfield uh, spokesman conferred the litigation in an email, to, uh, but declined to comment on its specifics. Nevertheless, it should be clear from the filings that the gap has taken inappropriate positions at a time when we should be working together, the spokesperson said. Brookfield has worked hard to reopen its shopping center safely and consistent with guidance from local authorities, which is important for many businesses and jobs that depend on commercial activity at our properties. The filing is a matter of contract law for which Brookfield intends to hold gap accountable. Brookfield's move obviously follows Simon's lawsuit earlier this month over more than $65.9 million in unpaid rent and other charges that Gap has not paid. The courts are just one arena in the ongoing tussle between landlords uh, and retailers over how much to rent to pay on stores that were dormant for weeks. And GAP is saying that they are pleased with negotiation with landlords to reach mutually agreeable solutions on fair rent terms, just as our hundreds of industry and government partners have sat with us in good faith to shape the post-COVID landscape. As of June 5th, GAP had reopened 1,600 stores, or about 55% of its fleet. Um, with stores shuttered during the period, the company saw revenues plummet 43% and a net loss of near a billion dollars. In the end, the likely resolution is probably partial payments. Well, it's, they, it, it, it's a strategy. The landlords have to sue Twiggy to um, enforce their covenants so that they are in line with their mortgages. If they don't sue, they aren't following their mortgage um, covenants. So, negotiations can be ongoing, they can be backdated, and things can happen, and all of a sudden we'll wake up one day and there's a resolution, is my guess. Uh, I got more going on here than I th remembered. Pay raises in states with salary history ban. A Boston University paper released this week found that states that have banned salary history questions in job recruitment led to 13% higher pay for African American applicants and 5% higher pay for women applicants. We have a situation where employers might not, might not be personally biased, but they are taking actions that result in substantial inequities for discriminated groups. Interesting to see how that follows over time, especially uh, with all that's going on in the world right now. These Nike sneakers are an ultra-rare piece of the brand's early history, and they're up for auction. It should come as no surprise that over the last few years, sneakers have been elevated to the rarefied realm of bona fide collectible item. And not just normal collectible like your pogs, remember those, but fancy collectible. Historically significant kicks are now selling at auction for record, hi record highs, often at price points more on par with what you'd expect from the fine art market. Last month, a pair of Air Jordans... Um, MJ himself wore during a game in his 1985 rookie season went for over half a million dollars. An astronomical amount by any measure, and one rendered in especially stark relief by Sotheby's initial estimate of a closing bid in the $150,000 range. Like a boat, you can't buy Michael Jordan sneakers. Uh, 
But if you have an extra half a million to drop and somehow missed out on all the hullabaloo, Sotheby's has secured a yet another piece of Nike history in what the fabled auction house is describing as the only appropriate way to follow up its just-wrapped uh, sale. It's worth noting that until this past May, the previous record for sneakers sold at auction was held by another pair of Nikes, the Waffle Racing Flat Moonshoe, which went for a whopping 437000 so yes, if you've got some old sneaks from the swoosh gathering dust in your childhood home, now might be a good time to start poking around in the garage. This time around, they are auctioning off a pair of waffle spike shoes from the 70s that were handmade by Bill Bowerman himself, the Nike co-founder and the man behind the brand signature breakthrough innovation, the Waffle Soul. Sotheby's secured the shoes from John Mays, a runner on the track team at the University of Oregon, where Bowerman was a longtime coach, and that and the lot includes a brief letter Bowerman wrote to Mays asking for de detailed feedback on the shoes' performance. Well, that's kind of cool. And there's a black and white picture of the shoes. Oh, give me a break, Krita. People got too much time on their hands. Just be kind. Just be kind is the is the key word. Hey, Michelle, great to have you with us. Taubman files court claim to hold Simon to merger deal. This year's biggest mall mar marriage is not a bust yet. Now, court filings made. Simon Property Group's lawsuit to cancel its 300 $3.6 billion acquisition of Taubman Centers, Taubman asked for an expedited hearing that could prevent Simon's attempt to run the clock on the deal. In a press release, uh, Taubman stated it believes that Simon's purported termination of the merger agreement is invalid and without merit, and that Simon continues to be bound by the ta transaction in all respects. And Simon backed out because it claimed that Taubman's operations had been disproportionately, disproportionately affected by COVID-19. Uh, Taubin's court filing called that assumption baseless, saying that Simon knew full well that there was a pandemic raging in the world when the purchase agreement was signed on February 9th. We'll see how that plays out in court. Speaking of court, an unlikely duo. Amazon teams up with luxury designer brand in lawsuit. In a first-of-its-kind lawsuit for both parties, Amazon and Viol Valentino filed a joint lawsuit against a New York-based counterfeiter. The online giant and Italian luxury brand filed the lawsuit against Buffalo, New York-based Caitlin Pan Group and New York resident Heo Pan for counterfeiting Valentino's iconic Valentino Garavani rock stud shoes and offering the infringing products for sale uh, uh, on a website and on Amazon in violation of Amazon's policies and Valentino's intellectual property rights. The lawsuit is Amazon's first joint litigation with a luxury fashion brand and Valentino's first joint litigation with an online retailer. Amazon said it shut down Caitlin Pan's seller account in September 29. Caitlin Pan continues to import, distribute, sell, and offer infringing products on website, other websites, and attempted to apply for a U.S. trademark for its infringing Valentino shoes, flagrantly and willfully disregarding Valentino's intellectual property. Amazon said the joint lawsuit builds on a history of collaborating with brands to hold counterfeiters accountable. In line with Amazon's past litigation, Valentino will receive any proceeds from the suit. The vast majority of sellers in our store are honest entrepreneurs, but we don't hesitate to take aggressive action to protect our customers' brands in our store from counterfeiters. Uh, VP of Customer Trust at Amazon said, Amazon and Valentino are holding this company accountable in a court of law, and we appreciate Valentino's collaboration throughout this investigation. Amazon further said, that in 2019 alone it invested more than 500 million and had more than 8,000 employees protecting its store from fraud and abuse, including counterfeiting and IP infringement products. 8,000 employees, they sell more counterfeit items than that a day. Oh, I didn't say that. 
As a result of its efforts, 99.9% .9 of all products viewed by customers on Amazon have not received a valid counterfeit complaint. Amazon also works closely with law enforcement agencies and reports all confirmed counterfeiters to U.S. and European authorities to help them build strong criminal cases. Valentino has also implemented a custom surveillance system and enforced its intellectual property rights specifically in the U.S. with the ongoing cooperation with U.S. Customs Authorities. Valentino in the past three years sees more than 2,000 counterfeit products. What, did somebody drop them off at their warehouse? I mean, 2,000 is really nothing. Uh, the brand Valentino represents the global market of Italian excellences and blah, blah, blah. That is interesting, though, that, Val that Amazon is taking that. And, it, and it's likely just to show other retailers, um, other uh, manufacturers, that they're doing something. Hey, Crystal, great to have you with us. You're making this a plum of a night. It is not a scotch night, though. It is a martini. It is National Martini Day, Crystal. Du -du 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 -du. Where are we here? Emma Watson in Gucci boardroom is a sign of the fashion times. Gucci's owner, Kering S.A., has shaken up the relatively staid world of corporate boardroom by appointing Emma Watson, the British actress, as a non-executive director. But the recruitment of the Harry Potter star isn't celebrity window dressing. Watson is a champion of sustainable fashion, so her advice to the French luxury behemoth will be valuable. Her every move is followed by the world's media, and what she does will be associated with curing from now on. She's a vocal equality campaigner, as was seen this week with her tweets of support for trans people. There you go. Emma in the boardroom. And what else I got here? As expected, a new bill would allow small businesses to get a second PPP loan. Yes, a second. Why just have one when you could have two? Certain small business owners may be able to apply for a second PPP loan if a new bill becomes law. The legislation called the Prioritized Paycheck Protection Program, P4 Act, would allow businesses with fewer than 100 employees to apply for a second loan if they are used up or on pace to exhaust their first PPP loan and can show a 50% loss in revenue due to the pandemic. Business owners also must show the need, the money for payroll and, uh, and eligible non-payroll costs. Uh, many small businesses will continue to struggle in the weeks and months to come, Senator Ben Cardin said. Congress must, must once again act to urgently support our most vulnerable small businesses through the crisis so our economy can recover as quickly as possible. Every business we prevent from failing now is a business that will be in a position to create jobs during the recovery. Um, ranking member Cardin and Jean Shaheen introduced the Senate version of the bill. Uh, Representative Angie Craig and uh, Antonio Delgado from New York introduced the companion bill in the House. And uh, this is good. This is a good start at getting the legislation. Well, it, it is. There's going to be other um, things with that, um, Jana, that get thrown in there. And more likely than the 50% loss to stay part of that bill is for it to be targeted at specific industries. So the industries that other representatives um, are looking at targeting are retail, restaurants, and uh, hospitality tourism industry are the key industries that they're looking at targeting um, that have been disproportionately hit uh, because of COVID. Um, and so they're looking at doing another one um, and offering that. And I've even heard as much as a third PPP but I think there's a decent chance of a second PPP being available. Um, and, and it's going to get interesting on what criteria they have to show to show that it is used. 
um, whether you're going to have to have already applied for forgiveness on your first PPP, what that's going to be. And we're really a month away from even the beginning of real discussions on that. You've got to keep that in mind. Yeah, restaurants have been brutalized. I mean, and that's why I really try to get takeout a couple, a few times a week and uh, other things because anything I can do to help support a restaurant right now, um, they've been absolutely brutalized. Uh, we, were, we were out at one the other day where they're doing essentially takeout, but you can sit out at their patio. So they, you order it as takeout, but you can sit out there with it and you can order bar service. And, you know, I wanted to punch the guy that, that was in complaining about his food or the lack of service or whatever. And it's like, you know, there's a pandemic up north here. It's really, there's nothing normal with restaurants. And, I, and this is a good community restaurant that does a lot of good. So I was really, uh, wanted to really uh, give the guy a piece of my mind, but I was patient. And I just over tipped at the restaurant while I was there and told them what a great job they did. Um... So to offset the schmuck. But, um, you know, so, you know, Congress isn't back till the end of July, uh, 20 something of July. So nothing's happening anytime soon with this, but it's a it's a good step in the right direction. And we'll see where that's going. But this this does bring up several other good points. OK, that we have to talk about tonight. One is, if you have not, if you have not gotten a PPP, if you are unsure if you should, if you think maybe, I don't know, you should at least get the application in. Call me, email me, email me so we can talk, but get your application in. You've got 10 days to get it under the current PPP. So if you have not gotten a PPP yet, get it, or at least apply for it, whether you take it or not. I'm happy to have that discussion with you, but get your application in tonight, tomorrow, okay? We've got 10 days left, okay? You need to get this in and you need to get it done, okay? It is, you know, you just have to. We, I'm happy to talk to you. There are some individual situations where it doesn't make sense for you to get it. And, but if you don't get your application in, it won't even be an option. So uh, with 10 days remaining, you need to have it in. The other thing is in the updated forgiveness. The other thing we have to talk about is the updated forgiveness. And with the updated forgiveness in the EZ form that has come through, you basically have either 8 or 24 weeks. So one of the questions that have been asked is, Okay, I'm going to run through the money. It's going to take me more than eight weeks. I'll probably be, I don't know, 12, 15 weeks, and then I'll apply for forgiveness. Under the current, the way the guidelines are written, it's either an eight or a 24 that you choose. So while it's fine that you spent the money in 15, let's say as an example, you may be required to wait until after week 24 to apply for forgiveness and you may be required to submit additional payroll paperwork up to week 24. Really shouldn't affect your forgiveness, it just may affect the time when you're able to apply for it. I plan on sticking to the original eight week time frame um, because I want it gone and I don't want it hanging out like a bad relative at Thanksgiving. Um, but, um, you know, I, I do want to, uh, I did want to throw that out there because they haven't clarified yet. It is one of the unanswered questions whether a business that does use it, let's say 15, will be able to apply for forgiveness at 15 or they will have to wait for week 24. I will update you on that as I know more, but uh, I did want to throw that out there for you um, so that you were did know it. But more important than anything is to get your application in. If you haven't, put it in tonight. If you're on the fence, unsure whether it's going to benefit you or not, just email me, okay? It's an easy email address to, to know. I, I've had several people today. I don't know what your email address is. Really? It's Neil 
N-E-I-L at ECIStores.com. It's N-E-I-L at ECIStores.com. Okay? You just email me there. Make sure you include your phone number. I will call you back. I promise you I will call you back. Okay? Um, that's where you email me. All the resources, everything that we talk about is available online. Here in the NARTS private Facebook group first. That's where everything is first. It's a member benefit. You get it first, okay? Um, absolutely, you're, you're front and center. But it's too important not to share with everybody. Everybody gets it the next day by noon, 12 o'clock by noon the next day. Everything is up at narts.org slash resale strong. Narts.org slash resale strong is where you find it and uh, get that information so uh, you can share it with everybody you know in business um, so we can help everybody get to the other side. And they can email me too. I take everybody. I talk to everybody. Butchers, bakers, uh, candlestick makers. I talk to them all. Happy to do it. The other last thing on the PPP tonight is the big banks have all gone to Treasury. I, I forget whether it was the same letter copied on each of their letterheads or they actually sent a joint uh, communication uh, to Treasury and the SBA saying, are you done here with all the changes? Because none of them are ready for forgiveness. No bank is actually ready to process a forgiveness application. So they are clarifying between the SBA uh, anything else they need so that we can um, begin the forgiveness process. But no bank is actually ready. The SBA is not ready to actually process these forgiveness applications. So just keep that in mind. Don't lose sleep over it. It will be ready. My personal guess is sometime after the 4th of July. That's just a guess, but that is my... Uh, if, if I were a uh, betting man, that's what I'd bet on right now. Uh, but we will get there, and we are stronger together. We are resale strong, Kitty. You got it. So I am here live, live every night, live at 8-ish Eastern, more 8 than ish most nights, uh, Eastern in the NARTS private Facebook group. Everything on here goes over to narts.org slash resale strong the next day by noon. You and all your friends can email me at neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com and include your phone number and take the call. When you get a call from a 508 number, it's coming from Neil. Take the call. Every night, every night, we start with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start this program every night. Good morning tonight was, in case you were not here at the top of the program, good morning. I know it seems like everyone left without you for the party. And those stepsisters suck, but us woodland creatures are on your side. Our good night tonight is good night. I know it seems like everyone is at the princess ball all the time, but it's okay to go home before midnight. Kick off your shoes. There's our graphics tonight, everybody. That's our show tonight. I'll be back here at 8 ish tomorrow night, live in the Narts Private Facebook group. But no, until then that you, and you, and most especially you, yes, I'm pointing at you, you tonight, you are not alone running this store, I'll see you tomorrow everybody, have a great night.